Hello, my name is Jamie Tkachuk, and I am here with Brian Shaw Hello. to walk you through Carol Analytical's virtual presentation designed to address some of your more pressing concerns regarding the recently released Stage 10 amendments to the BC CSR. This presentation is intended to be a high-level introduction to what has been released so far, what it could mean to you, and some of the work that is still ongoing. So please sit back, relax, and allow us to introduce you to how to deal with the Stage 10 amendments without losing your mind. In order to make this process as simple as possible, we have devised a five-step guide to ensure you have your bases covered when it comes to preparing yourself for the changes. Towards the end of this presentation, we will provide you with some of the tools Caro is offering to ensure that any sites carried beyond November 1st are properly monitored. So step one to this five-step program is know your land use. There have been a number of new land uses that have been added. We will walk you through these. Step two is learn to read the new guidelines. The structure of the schedules have changed immensely, so it is important that you know where to find the information you are looking for. Step three is identify the new additions, including an expanded list of existing chemical categories, as well as some of the new emerging contaminants. Step four, is identify limit changes to the existing contaminants. This is where we will explore some trends and what you might expect to see on a site-by-site -site basis. Step five, additional resources for you to tap into. And last but not least, the things to come. There are a number of changes still on the books and we will address a few of the more popular topics. Step one, know your land use. In addition to the existing land use regulatory limits, there are five new land uses to consider. Highlights include high and low density residential, which applies to soil sampling, and the addition of a parkade standard for vapor samples. The urban park standards have also been replaced by the new wildland standards. Once you have identified your land use, step two to being successful with the new guidelines is understanding how to read them. The table shown here indicates how the former CSR schedules have been reorganized and where you can expect to find the contaminants you know and love under the new scheduling system. Schedule 3 will be the place to look once the new regs come into effect. It is worth noting that all contaminants are now listed alphabetically and are no longer grouped into categories based on their structure and properties. It may look messy at first, so we do recommend implementing an internal method to understanding these compounds and how they relate to one another. Once all the final limits are released, and the new methods complete, we hope to be able to provide you with a starting point for this task. Step 3. Identifying the new additions. As you move through the new schedules, you may notice a number of new analyte names. But don't worry, many of the new compounds fall into categories you are already familiar with, such as VOCs and PAH. The good news is that many of these are already being run and or reported, although you may not have reported them previously. In regards to packages and pricing, we are doing our best to cover as many contaminants of concern as possible, and we'll do our best to ensure that prices change as little as possible. We will also be looking for feedback as to which new additions will be of particular interest to those in the field. And now the moment you've all been waiting for, the emerging offenders. These are categories of compounds that were not previously regulated by the BCCSR, but do have standards under different jurisdictions throughout the world. Five categories of compounds that you're most likely to see are addressed in the following two slides, along with possible reasons you may need to look out for these compounds. This includes speciated metals such as arsenic and lead to classify metals known to show higher toxicity and bioavailability than their inorganic forms. Nonophenols and nonophenol ethoxylates. Nonophenols are the most environmentally persistent of the two, however both are toxic to aquatic life and moderately bioaccumulative. Sulfalane and diisopropylenolamine or DIPA, both of which are additives used in the oil and gas industry, alpha ethyl estradiol, the first pharmaceutical to be applied to the water quality guidelines in British Columbia, and perfluorinated acids such as PFOS, which are found virtually everywhere. You may even be sitting on some as we speak. Once you are familiar with each of these new potential contaminants of concern, it is important to note that these are not new chemicals and methods already exist to run the analysis, so you shouldn't be caught without access to the lab testing you need. So what about the existing standards? Not a lot is staying as it is. With all the moving parts, it may be difficult to see the big picture. In general, metal standards will be even lower, while PAH standards will be slightly less conservative. VOC and phenols will go up slightly in soil, but do come down in water. 
One of the most common questions is whether these changes are in line with current instrument capabilities and what labs are doing to meet the new guidelines. The answer is everything we can. CARO has invested a significant amount of time and money into the acquisition of state-of-the-art equipment to address these lower DLs and new parameters. We are also going to listen to the industry and focus on the same compounds you are interested in. The BC Environmental Laboratory Advisory Committee is currently reviewing some of the more stringent standards. They will be providing technical recommendations for revisions slated to be released in May 2017, but more on that later. Last but not least, the final step to keeping up with the Stage 10 amendments, know where to get the information you need. Carol will be providing information updates and comparison tools via our online web store, which can be accessed by clicking on the link in the comments below. Life is too short to waste compiling tables, so why not buy one for yourself and a colleague, then take off to the pub for a pint or two? We are also able to provide a side-by-side -side comparison of existing site data to the old versus the new regulations via our online data portal, Client Connect. This will allow you to monitor your site and be ready for the next phase of your project. Please contact your local Carroll representative and get signed up today. So despite all the work that has been done, there is still much more to go. BC LTAC is currently working on developing a multi-PH leachate procedure that may come up for review as early as March. This new method may address some of the questions surrounding soil relocation agreements and the repealed Schedule 7, however extensive method validation is still required. The BC hazardous waste regulations haven't gotten much airtime in this presentation, as nothing concrete has been finalized with respect to the toxicity equivalency factors for both PAH and dioxins. And of course, because nobody's perfect, an errata is currently in the works with a tentative release date of May 2017. This document will likely address the question of final detection limits under the drinking water regulations and provide updates on some of the erroneous standards provided in the first issuances of the amendment. In an effort to ensure that our regulations are kept up to speed with the progress of science, the MOE has also indicated that it will implement a five-year cycle of review and update the regulations as necessary. On behalf of the team at CARO, thank you for joining us from wherever you are. If you have any questions, would like to provide any feedback on this presentation, or have suggestions for future content, please comment on the video below or connect with us on social media. Goodbye! Goodbye.